This is Jan. Uh, I'm returning to a conversation that came out earlier about the use of the eyes. It, it, it felt troubling to me that uh, I may have, you know, sort of gone over it mm. inadequately, I guess would be the best way of saying it. And I wanted, I wanted to just go through points again. Yeah, this, is, was her point, this was her question. You have to retrain uh, the way you see and correct the instinct to focus on one thing. If nearsighted, as I am, is it helpful to take off your glasses until further along in the painting process? Now, I think I addressed that uh, some long while ago, but I wanted to make some points, uh, one little point at a time, right through this thing, um, because there's two different kind of key aspects to this thing. Um, well, let's start with the, um, uh, the instinct to focus on one thing. Um, Maybe it's instinctive, I don't know, but um, the key in painting, in terms of learning to make yourself a better painter, uh, let's say a painter of what you see in front of you, it really is about, by the way, what we call impressionism, but we don't mean broken color and, and poor drawing. We mean actually drawing what you see in front of you uh, ocularly, soundly, you know, like in other words, with the, um, with the intent of making a likeness of what you see in all, in all aspects. And um, one of the things you will learn if, uh, in terms of, if, of uh, really getting all of what's happening out there is to be a, as it were, Boston School Impressionist. I mean, like everybody, as I've said before, Zorn, Soroy, all these guys, all the strong guys back after the, uh, after the uh, uh, you know, and corresponding with this, this big fork that corresponds with the Bougaros and the Leightons, uh, this big fork of these major, major uh, uh, players. Uh, uh, was between the the uh, ways of handling the seen world, going from the outline based to the visual based uh, approach, very different methods, and it may it may sound like they're the same, but they're not the same. When I say visual, well, aren't we all talking about looking with our eyes and all that sort of thing? But the visual, uh, when you look at nature in front of you, you listen to it, you say, and so what would be the most logical thing to put down first, and that sort of thing. You know, some people would say, well, put down your darks first because that's the part that's least like on your canvas. You don't have any darks. You need something to work with, right? So you have a white canvas, theoretically. Uh, if you have a middle value canvas, you have a little bit of both. You know, you have uh, to put down some lights and darks. Well, uh, that's all fine, except that the overall approach to... Um, uh, and I mean, I mean that's, that would be right in the way we're thinking, but the overall approach previously had been draw outlines of objects, okay? So the instinct, is that the instinct? Do we naturally tend, to, well, for some long time, apparently, yeah, we do. We draw a face, we draw a circle for a face as a child, you know, and you put two dots for eyes or whatever you do, smiley mouth. And, uh, and we call that a face. Uh, but uh, what is instinct? I don't know. I don't honestly know. But what is seeing, we do know, right? So the old instinct that she talks about here is to focus on one thing. So if you mean that we're focusing on one thing and we mean... Uh, one area, one effect, one, you know, one spot, then you'd be talking Boston School Impressionism. But if you mean to focus on one thing and you mean one object, uh, that would be different. If you're talking about drawing a figure and you decide to focus on the head or the nose or the eye or that sort of thing, that's a whole different process. And uh, so if you say, and again, to focus is another question. Do we mean focus? Do we mean actually zoom in and put things in focus immediately? Uh, which leads to her other question. Is it helpful to take off your glasses until further along in the painting process? So I'll talk about, I mean, th these things all are so intermixed that I'm, I, I won't <laughs> pretend that I don't find it difficult to know precisely where to start or how to integrate the next part. But, uh, but when she says, until you're further along in the painting process, it implies that actually further along means more detail to the point of making a literal uh, and complete and, you know, a, a, a nailed fully articulated look of nature uh, in front of you. Well, that's a student model. It really, frankly, is a student model. It's quite important in the grammar side of this thing, about learning to see, learning to draw what you see in front of you. Can you draw the big shapes? Can you draw the major forms? Can you do that? And, and then can you draw all the small things in relation to those things? So it's kind of a, a linear process to going from the greater to the lesser, from the, from the great forms to the minor forms, and to integrating the, for example, integrating the eyes into, a, into, a, into an egg. 
And that is a different process from drawing a nose and then an eye and then all that sort of stuff. Um, um, it, it's a significantly different process, admittedly. But the difference is that an impressionist doesn't precisely work that way. And so, and I'm now, I'm now talking about the, the, the orientation to be, uh, to do what the Boston School guys does. Because what you'll see in a Boston School painting is you'll see finish in the start. And I've said that before, but it's very difficult to get your head around this. In other words, if there's actually going to be finish in the start, if I actually mean we paint from effects and we make those spots where these effects are that are the most significant effects and we articulate them to the look of nature at the beginning so we find them, so we can make them useful, then we're not in the same construct uh, uh, you know, at all of saying, uh, first we'll make everything a smudgy thing, and then we'll sort of try to gradually bring it into focus, which people think we're doing. Um, and we might have even tried doing in some phases of our lives. So there isn't uh, an orientation. That's the old rub in look, you know, is this whole thing about f just get some junk on the campus and cover it all up, get it covered in a half hour. Uh, it, it was an expression that was brought to us actually by Gamble, the idea of covering the campus in a half hour. It isn't a plausible thing to do unless you have a preliminary drawing sitting down there and only if you have actually um, the capacity to pl put down majors within that drawing. But we're talking about working without drawing. We're talking about working directly from, from nature. And so we wind up with a whole different process. We wind up with a process that says, let's put the color notes down that we're going to draw with and then let's organize that whole group by the major sizes, the major effects, the major color, um, the major color masses, and uh, and then so how does that work, right? So that's why if you can follow me a little bit, and I'm probably making this even more confusing than, than ever, but we're actually only working with uh, strong effects at the beginning, and we articulate them to the look of nature. Now we make them as like as we can the first time, following Bonat's rule at those points, right? But as Sargent describes it, it's, 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 it's points or spots and angles. So you're working on spots and you're finding their placement. You're placing them well on the page. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a function of this process, if you don't make the points articulately, it doesn't work. You can't do generalizations, vague generalizations, and get articulate anything else after that, right? So you have to be articulate. It's like when you're putting the color notes down. You may put down some colors, but your immediate problem is to correct them to each other until it's an articulate statement of the color scheme. And do you see what I mean by articulate? But the same thing when you're trying to make a, a series of these leading points, which is called the arabesque in the way of working with a Boston School painter. When you set these leading points up, they need to be, they need themselves be articulate, and then their organization on the page needs to be articulated well. So, and that, so that means you have to be organized points and angles and placement on the page. So it's all this stuff that underlies the setup. So in that way, you see, I'm telling you that the fuzziness, they take your, your glasses off and blur your eyes. Well, it does funny things to the color, uh, for one thing. But in general, what it does is it takes the edge off of everything. It makes you, it takes away focus. So when Jan is asking uh, the instinct to focus on one thing, uh, if, you take, if you're nearsighted, you're fo you can't focus on anything, right? Now, what I'm going to explain to you, I've explained before, we need to focus on everything. In other words, there's a simultaneity of focus. Would you believe, after I've said all these things, the way a painting is painted, and I'll show you this Vermeer, and maybe I'll just go ahead and put it on the screen, but this Vermeer is, is, can be very easily seen to be in complete and unified focus. You can look at any part of that picture and it will appear to be in focus. It won't be fuzzy on the edges. It won't have been coming out of the fuzz even for that matter. Coming out of the fog, by the way, don't confuse that with coming out of fuzziness. <laughs> That's not exactly what we mean by that. Uh, but uh, so it's gonna take some more clarification beyond what I can do here today. But so uh, if you can follow that idea though, that there's, it's not a general fuzziness, but th rather there's a generalized focus. So what it means is you see the whole field and so you don't zoom into any part. You let yourself scan the field as if it were a two-dimensional phenomenon there, everything being in simultaneity of focus, okay? So it's not no focus. It's simultaneous focus. It's, it's always focus. It's just you don't get to focus. You don't get to do the zooming in thing. You just simply look at the things and see, okay? Uh, and what they're doing to each other when you can see them that way is, um, is the look you want, is the set of relationships you want. Um, 
So, but that leads us still to the different question because the lay-in, you can't, you haven't got time to do all these little things in focus. So you have to blur your eye to find out which things to actually work on. And that doesn't mean the rest of them aren't ultimately going to be brought into a, you know, the simultaneous world. But, but what it's telling you is this whole thing is going to be set up from the primaries. We need to put down the strong guys and we need to bring them focus. Now, the rest of it won't be in focus, but it won't be anything at all. But we avoid the drawing of these other places, right? So you'll see a whole bunch of focus at edges. And I've shown you the starts before. Uh, uh, maybe I'll show you this one. Um, I held it badly last time I showed it to you. But this is just a, an hour uh, study uh, for, for a still life it's sitting in my studio, um, an interior. But you can see the articulateness of this and this. And, and certain spots, you know, certain places. These are keys to the setup of this thing, right? Now, the color scheme is quite accurate in this thing. The blues, the green blues, the lighter ones, the, you know, and the distribution of these things, the placements is all quite accurate. But, the, um, but this idea of bringing the look of nature to a spot, right? The look of nature, if it's, if it's, if it's there, it needs to be articulated. You can see the difference between this and this. However, so these things are all in a relatively right relationship to each other, and yet there are a lot of places where you have to generalize. For example, from here to here, there's all kinds of stuff maybe happening in there. I'm not, I can't be into that and actually cover my canvas in a half hour. But you can see by looking at this, though, that what I mean by a blurred eye <laughs> is, is uh, when I say you're fuzzing your eyes, you'll see this wouldn't fit into that category because this would have been fuzzed out and this would have been fuzzy. Everything would have been fuzzy. And you can't do that. You have to have the the leading points by articulate, you know, by in terms of their their uh, articulateness, in terms of their uh, sharp and sharp forwardness. Put it that way. Those things have to be well expressed and have to be right to each other early on in this picture, because we set up the picture from these effects, from these leading effects, right? If you're working the way we're talking about working with the impressionist eyes, is is an entirely effect based process. So. Um, I'm not sure if that's clear enough or worse, but um, that's a first stab at that. Now I'm going to just uh, see, make sure I haven't left anything out. Um, so we talk about general truth, not general fuzziness, but general truth. And so we mean that in general, you can see that this is a middle, middle dark picture, right? That's a general truth. You can see it's a warm picture. That's a general truth. Uh, the, the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, Shapes themselves, uh, they're generally right to each other and all that sort of thing. There's this whole thing, the whole placement of all this whole entire thing on the page is generally right, right? And in some way, cases, it's precisely right. In other words, I figured out exactly where I want this to exit the picture over here, for example. Uh, but so there's a certain general rightness. The color scheme is there, etc. So there's a certain general rightness, but don't think that means fuzziness or anything like that. Don't confuse the two. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, and then so there's a last point I want to make, and that is the idea of finish. Also, uh, you know, as you push it along, what did she say? Um, until further along in the painting process. So it's this very idea of finish uh, uh, is, is quite important in another way, and that is that the good painters are always talking, when you hear them talk, they talk about breadth rather than, this is Ang talking, breadth rather than elaboration. Elaboration means the adding the nth degree of extra details. Now, I've said before, I started saying before, that the student will, that's his, sort of his training, is to get you to know how to do that, how to put down the great major masses and their relationships to each other, and then to work up that those levels of detail within these areas, as if you want to call it subplots, and to have it all maintain the great unity of the skull, shall we say, as you're placing eyes and things like that. So, but the idea of, of um, and you see it all over the place today, everybody's Trump, because everybody just looks in and looks in and looks in some more and believes that the idea of, of, of uh, really being a good draftsman, it has to do with this depth of articulation rather than the rather than the beauty of the major forms playing to each other in a bigger in a bigger in a bigger sphere. So, oh boy, <laughs> I'm betting I haven't uh, done any justice to this at all. Uh, I'm going to listen to it <laughs> and make sure that I don't have to just start over. But all right, so. Uh, Thank you, Jan. I'm going to also talk about your effects again, and I'm going to probably try to see if I can make uh, create some some uh, value studies for you, or or dig some up at the studio where you can see what we're talking about by drawing from effects, and and even when we're just using charcoal. 
So, okay. Um, thank you, John, for that. And uh, I hope this helps a tiny bit. Do try to find it. I'll look for the other video, do, the other video that talks about this way of seeing. And uh, I'll see how I've done by, if I've done anything at all to be useful to you. Um, anyway, all right. See you next time. Uh, comment, share, uh, subscribe, etc. And uh, next time.